Welcome. In this session in Linear Data Analysis, we'll explore Principal Components Analysis, or PCA, as a problem in matrix approximation. Let's recall that what we have are zero mean data in a matrix M. These are all real numbers. There are M observations, so there are M rows, and then there are N variables or columns. And we can perform the singular value to composition of this matrix as U sigma B transpose. Now, if we use the Eckhart-Young theorem, what we can do is we can get a, a rank, let's use P as our number, a rank P approximation. And if we do that, what we get is this, is that our matrix M is, so using that approximation, what we have is this is going to be we take the first left singular vector, we take the first singular value, and then we take the transpose of the first right singular vector. And this is a rank 1 matrix, and that is the best rank 1 approximation using either the L2 norm or the Frobenius norm. If we continue on, we can then get a rank 2 approximation. So that would be U2 sigma 2 v2 transpose, and so on. And then we would end up at, if we have a rank p approximation, this would be the pth left singular vector, the pth singular value, and the pth right singular vector transposed. So let's explore what happens when we multiply this. So let's recall that the, that the matrix V is orthogonal. And that means that its columns form an orthonormal basis. So that means if I take column J and transpose it and multiply it by column J, that's the same as VJ dot VJ, and that has to equal 1. And then if I take VJ, transpose it, and multiply it by V, any I that is not equal to J, well, because the columns form an orthonormal basis, the Jth column is orthogonal to every other column, and so that has to equal 0. Now, Let's see what happens when I express our matrix using, as an approximation, using a sum of rank 1 matrices, and then I multiply by the singular value. Well, the PCA score, the first one we can write as the vector Z1, and that equals our zero mean matrix times v1. And depending on how we're thinking, we might think that v1 is a loading vector, that is, it's an eigenvector of the covariance matrix, or we could think of v1 as being the first right singular vector of that zero mean matrix. And of course, it's the same v1, right? Now, if we multiply m by v1, what will happen is when we multiply that into the first term, we'll get u1, sigma1, and then v1 dot v1 is 1. So that has to equal sigma1 times u1. And what happens when I multiply this term by v1 on the, on the right side? Well, that would be v2 dot v1, which has to be 0. And that means that this term vanishes. And so all of the rest vanish. And so that means that our PCA score, if we think about PCA in terms of a, a matrix approximation, the first score in PCA is the, the first singular value of the SVD of our zero mean matrix times the first left singular vector. So those are all the same. Now, what that means is we can now make some statements, right? We can say these are equivalent. 
And what we can do is we can write what I just said. We can write that the, the, the first PCA score vector, which we're calling Z1, and the approximation that comes out of the Eckhart-Young theorem, which is the first singular value times the first left singular vector. So those are the same. So now we can continue and say, well, these are equivalent. What happens when we take p values? So these are equivalent is is approximate m as rank p, and let's call that mp, and then we'll say use, let's say that we form a matrix that has rank p, and we do that by multiplying m of rank p times v. Now, uh, this will also be rank p, right? So that is equivalent to approximate approximate the column space space of m as and now this could be either zp or we could just use this left singular matrix from the SVD or we could write that as the first p columns. So all of these statements are equivalent. When we find the PCA scores that's the same as using the first left singular vector and then when we're multiplying it by this sigma 1, that's giving us the score. But what does this span? Well, this spans the space of all vectors that are scalar multiples of it. And what happens when we take number 2? Well, sigma 1, and then we would append. So now, let's do a little experiment here. Let's think of, the, of this rank 2, so, so p equals 2. What that will be is sigma 1, u1, sigma 2, u2. So that will be our first score and our second score. And this is, this spans a vector space that we can call u2. And u2 could be spanned by this and then we can observe that if we just take those first two vectors, that they that also spans this space. So whether we use the singular value decomposition of our zero mean data, or we go through PCA and we use the scores, it turns out that in either case, what we're doing, so this is a deep result for PCA, what we're doing is we're approximating the data using the scores, approximating the data using the left singular vectors. These are, these are the same in the sense that they span the same vector space.